Put me in. Warning. What you are about to hear contains explicit language, adult themes, and potentially disturbing content. The views and opinions expressed are those of the hosts and do not reflect the opinions of anyone else, anywhere, ever, in the history of the world. This podcast is intended for an immature audience and should not be listened to by anyone, anywhere, ever, in the history of the world. You know, fuck it. You've been warned. Hello, welcome to this week's edition of Geek Pod. I'm your host, Paul. I'm Hugh. Forbes. Willis. I'm Jack. Guys, what's got you geeked? Well, I know you're going to say WrestleMania. I can't say I'm thrilled about the fact that it's fucking winter again. And it wasn't like an hour and a half ago. Um, I mean, Ike Perlmutter got fired from Marvel and Disney, so that's kind of exciting. But um, I got to say what really has me uh, geek this this week as of today, and I was going to save this for midstream, but we watched Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey tonight. Nice. And I got to tell you, that was actually a pretty good movie. Now, it's not going to win any awards, don't get me wrong, but they played it completely straight. I don't think there's a joke in this movie. A single one it is all played completely straight and we got to the end of the movie it's a little short and it, it probably they could have done there were a couple establishing shots that were a little too long i mean i think their editor was probably like i'd love to cut this down a bit but this movie's already only 75 minutes or something you know <laughs> so they, they really couldn't um but i was really impressed i didn't know what to expect going into it it's an absolute batshit crazy idea, and when it said at the end that Winnie the Pooh would return, I was really excited because it, it was a lot of fun. That's awesome. Very, very cool. Did he say, oh, bother, in it, though? That, no, he did. He, in fact, I think he's got one line on the whole thing. Nice. Yeah, it, it's really fucking creepy. Very cool. They're already talking sequel, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Who directed that, Hugh? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. David something, Rosenthal, Greenblatt. I don't know. It was some weird fucking name that I couldn't commit to memory. But I noticed, noted that it was a weird name as we were watching it. Perfect. It, it opens, that? though, with like a hand-drawn montage of what's happened before. Not animated, but hand-drawn. Just nice. simple line drawings, which was really fucking cool, especially when it started getting dark and gory. Outstanding. Uh, so that, were, that's how you get your background? Yeah, they, they give you the background, you know, because it, it where the movie starts, Christopher Robin is an adult, and he brings his wife back to a hundred acre wood to try to find his old friends. Oh boy. Who are no longer the, the friends he remembers. <laughs> oh. I love it. All right. Very cool. Who wants to go? I'll go. So um, back in October, um, I wanted to go see Killer Queen. They were playing at the Landmark Theater this past weekend. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, let's go do that. So my uh, buddy, his girlfriend, Emily, and I went to see them play. And of course, they're not the original Queen band, of course. But I'm not going to lie to you. It was actually pretty entertaining. It was pretty cool. As you know, most concerts that you sell like T-shirts or something like that, they actually sold like little signature mustaches, which are really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really clever. Um, a little boy like in front of me, he was dressed as Freddie Mercury, which was really cool. It was really neat. He had his hair slicked back. He had the mustache. He had the, like the yellow trench coat. This lady next to me, like there's doing the Bohemian Rhapsody song, and she's like, "Hold my cane, son!" Like she like really is like getting into character, like. People are like dancing in like the aisles and I'm like, holy shit. Okay. This is pretty good. Uh, Patrick M Myers is the guy that plays Freddie Mercury. This is a group from England. That, um, he was like driving, he was like hip thrust and he's like, get your asses out of these seats. These seats aren't going to be made for nothing. So like, it needs to be like at the amphitheater or something like the, the landmark theater, like it's so tight, close quarters. But um, he, the guy kept like blowing kisses to the audience. He's like, all right, those are for you guys. Not you women. Those are for the men. <laughs> so like he's just pretending to be Freddie Mercury, which is kind of cool. But um, it was kind of cool though. He's like, here's a tribute for like Freddie, and like they were do like they like did a shrine. Like he's like, thank you, Freddie, for everything. But um, short and sweet. Went to see Killer Queen. Pretty good show. Lasted about a couple hours. 
sixty-five dollars a ticket, so not too bad, but um, a lot of fun. So short I have a and question. sweet. Yeah. So your friend's girlfriend's name was also Emily. No, her name's Andrea. So oh, my friend, because yeah. you said him, his girlfriend Emily, and I. So. Oh, I meant. Oh no, what I meant to say. Well, no, I said my buddy, his girlfriend Emily, and I. Exactly, his girlfriend okay. Emily. Okay, whatever. Well, no. Well, I okay, don't care. So, Never mind. Let's I know. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm with all done now. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'll go. I'll go. Okay. Um. So. It was two weeks ago I went to the doctors. I meant to mention this last week. Um, being a diabetic, uh, you have to have your eyes checked regularly. Um, they noticed I had uh, diabetic retinopathy oh. in one of my eyes. Actually, I have it in both eyes, but one eye is worse than the other. Left eye is worse than the right eye. So I went, and they will numb your they'll numb your eye. And they give you, you know, they check the pressure in your eye. They do all the screenings, all that stuff. They inject this dye in your eye, uh, in your arm, so they can see your eyes. It's not, it's not the actual dye they would use to say do a CAT scan or something like that. Oh. It's a vegetable-based dye, which was pretty cool. I thought so. They inject it in your arm, and they can see your eyes, and it lights up the the spots in your eyes that are bad, basically bad, or basically dying. We'll say. Oh. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, but it, it turns your urine, and this is the way it was said to me when it was given to me, it turns your urine Mountain Dew green. No. And I'm not going to lie to you, they're not wrong. And you pee like that for 24 hours. That's what did strange. it taste like? <laughs> like urine. Oh. Try glow in the dark that color. I'm just glad you checked, you know, <laughs> so that we don't have to when we have to. Right. Thanks. So when I was there, the doctor doctor came in and he's like, okay, can you show me the pictures and stuff? He goes, look, you got some issues here in your left eye. We got to take care of that. I'm like, oh, okay, well, how do we do that? He's like, well, we can do it with a laser. Um, don't recommend a laser right off the bat. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll give you some medication. Okay. How do you get the medication? He goes, oh, we inject it right into your fucking eye. I'm like, excuse me? So how about yeah, that goes, laser? Yeah. <laughs> he, he goes, he goes, nothing to worry about. He goes, I do about 5,000 of these a year. I'm like, okay. I don't know. So I was like, all right. I said, well, well, let's schedule it. We'll see how this goes. So they scheduled it for last Tuesday. And I had to change it because one of the guys at work had to work or had something going on Tuesday. So I had to work late. So I scheduled it for yesterday. And they're like, oh, yeah, you'll be able to drive after. And they're not wrong. You can drive. You, you're, you'll are you be shocked at the fact that you can drive. I was shocked a little bit, too. Um, so I show up there. My point was to 3.15. Showed up at 3.15, like you're supposed to. Waited about 20 minutes to get in. They numb your eye. Put drops in your eye. Check the pressure in your eye. They put iodine in your eye. They go clean your eye. They'll put iodine in it. They put a little tiny, and you can't even really tell what it is. It's a little tiny piece of gauze that's got lidocaine on it on the side of your eye and numbs the spot where the doctor's going to inject your eye. And uh, the place that I went was was fantastic. The, the, the nurses were great. The doctor came in. He was great. Shook, uh, shook his hand. All that stuff, you know. Yes, even though he was about to torture me, I shook his hand. Well, that's you're no. just <laughs> testing to make sure that is you know he doesn't have tremors or anything for that. <laughs> like my <laughs> old dentist. <laughs> oh dear God! So I got the injection in my eye yesterday, and it's the creepiest thing ever. You you can't really see the nipples; they do it off to the side of your eyes, if you can tell. You know, I thought your eye looked straight. Oh, oh yeah. God! Yeah, oh, yeah, it's, yeah, I it's, thought it was just oh. the camera. No, it's my oh. eyes. The do it again. I want to see it again. No! <laughs> Kevin, don't look. Oh, God! Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, so. Not okay. Oh, the whispering eye. Is that bruising? Or what is, what is that? Well, what, and So they, they explained to me what happened. So when the doctor did it. So when he, they injected it in your eye. They injected it off to the side. The problem I have is right behind my iris. 
That's that's where it's starting to die. But they inject it off to the side, which is okay. You know, it, uh, I'll, I'll tell you right now, if you ever have to have it done, if please, God, don't ever have to have this done. It's the worst thing to have to think about for two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, they would have done it. The, they would have done it that first day I went. But I, I was like, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, thank you. you just no, no. My, I gotta get. I gotta get prepared for this. <laughs> so, um, but when they inject it in your eye, you can see the medication in your eye. Like you see a black dot in your eye, no. and it moves around in your eye. When you look different ways, you see the medication in your eye. It's the fucking creepiest thing ever. But it goes away. Twenty four hours later, it's gone. Like it, I don't see it anymore. The big question is, what did you feel? I didn't feel anything. Surprisingly, my my mom's had it done a couple of times, and she said, look, you have to make sure that you get your eye as numb as possible so that you don't feel anything. Because if you don't, it hurts like a bitch. Fuck, no. And I was like, yeah, okay. So I told the nurse, I said, look, I want to make sure sure my eye is as numb as hell. I I don't want to feel anything. I don't have, I don't mind. I'm not afraid of needles. I'm not afraid of any type of medical procedure except you sticking a needle in my fucking eye. <laughs> and she's like, no, no, we, you know, we understand and, and, and all that. And she's like, it's completely painless that we do it all the time. She says that what happens is, is you'll notice that your eye will be bloodshot for a couple of days, maybe a week. She says, what happens is, is you have so many blood vessels in your eye when you stick the needle in, you're going to have gonna one. catch one. Yeah. And your eyes going to be bloodshot. I was like, okay. So that, that's what, that's what the, that's what this is. It doesn't hurt anymore. It hurt yesterday. It was painful yesterday when I got home. It was tough to, like, I would sit on the couch and I was watching TV. I had to shut the lights off because the lights started bothering my head, like my eyes. I went to bed. I didn't turn any TV on. I closed my door, which I normally don't do because I normally leave it open for my son and whatnot. But yesterday was a, it was a bit rough. I actually got up this morning and almost called in sick to work because I was I had such a migraine that I was very nauseous. But it went away. Took some ibuprofen that went away. But that's that's the that's the bloodshot in your eye. They tell you right off the bat we're gonna hit a we're gonna hit a blood vessel and your eye is gonna be like that and it will it will go away. You just have to let it fix itself. What if they tell you that because hitting the blood vessel is their favorite part and they know <laughs> you'll just buy whatever they say. <laughs> and you do. You literally do. They're like, oh, you, your, your eye is going to itch after you. You can't itch your eye. Like, I haven't been able to itch my eye. I haven't been able to rub my eye. Because there's when they do it, there's a spot where they do the injection that is like a little bubble. It's almost like getting an injection in your arm. Right. You see the you see the dot. Well, in your eye, it bubbles up. And you, if you rub it, you can rupture the, the spot. And, and your vitreous fluid leaks out. Yeah. So. Mm. Did you have a lazy eye after they numbed your eye up? <laughs> no. Yeah. Corbs, I remember when I was seven years old, because I had a lazy eye growing up, and I actually had eye surgery, and they had to stick a needle in my eye, because that's why I can go like this with my eyes now. Yeah. Like, it's, I can, like, cross one in and go one, go in, one go out. It's nuts. Like, eye surgery is nothing you want to fuck with. It's just, yep. ugh. And but, guess how many times, like, guess, guess how often I have to go and have this done? No. 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 You're not I'm gonna, done? I'm gonna have, I have to have it done again. No. I have it done every six to eight weeks. Oh, no. Forever? No. For how long? As long as it takes. Oh. No. Oh, and the, and when, I go, when I go back in six to eight weeks, they'll check my eye. If everything's good, they'll say, okay, we'll do the shot again. You come back in six to eight weeks. If everything is great, they'll push it a little bit longer. And right. it might be three months I got to go back. If things aren't progressing correctly, I may have to go back earlier. Is your insurance working with you, Forbes? Oh, yeah. Good. Good. Oh. Yep. So, and my biggest question to them was, well, A, am I going to be able to wear my contacts? I haven't worn my contacts in the longest time because work, you, Kevin, Paul, you guys know when you work on a computer, you're working with a tiny screws, you're working with very little things. And my, my contacts, I can only see far away. So, I have to hold everything away from myself to, to see exactly so I wear my glasses so I can take my glasses off and I can see shit up close. Mm-hmm. So I don't wear my contacts to work. I wear my contacts when I when I golf. When I'm doing anything other than work, I'll have my contacts in. I don't have them in at night as you take my glasses, you wear my glasses in anyways. But so my concern was, can I wear my contacts? 
and will I still be able to go right on my trip, which is next week? They're like, oh shit. He goes, you, you'll be able to wear your contacts tomorrow. And I'm thinking to myself, as I look at my eye today, I'm like, like no, 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 <laughs> no, I don't think I want to wear my contacts today. No, so. I don't think I will. Yeah. <laughs> Corbs, so, yeah, so you I, should, you, for your uh, trip though, you should get a sick eye patch like the governor from Walking Dead or something like that for when you go to your golf trip. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Hear me out, Corbs. White. <laughs> Bedazzled eye patch, so it almost looks like a golf ball with some diamonds in it, <laughs> and and a googly eye. <laughs> <laughs> we got you. <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, that's what had me. Uh, oh, to, be honest, to be honest with you, I was I was pretty geeked about it because again, uh, I like needles. It's the weirdest thing. I like watching oh, you, people getting no. shots. I like watching medical procedures, no. stuff like that. Like I, I, that, that shit doesn't bother me at all. And I don't understand why that doesn't bother me. And I can't watch a horror movie. Like, <laughs> I, I can sit in an operating room and watch the person being cut open on the table, but I can't watch a horror movie. So if somebody can explain that to me. You, you're you were a doctor in a past life or a mortician possible it's fucked up dude that was one that was one of the questions they asked when i when i worked at my last two jobs ago before covid that was one of the questions i was asked in in my interview can you handle being in an operating room with somebody being operated on right behind you and i looked at the guy who was interviewing me and said i'll probably be the guy standing over the doctor's shoulder going why are you doing that like that (laughs) and he went what (laughs) Uh, yeah i used to watch my i used to watch my i would one of my mom was or not my mom my dad would go to his foot doctor and I took him. I took him to the foot doctor. He had ingrown toenail removed. And I watched oh, the doctor do remove it. Yeah, cut yeah. down the thing. And I was asking questions and the doctor was looking at me like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I watched I watched my ex, my son's mother, watched her have plantar warts removed. Like, and I was literally, the doctor was like, come here, come here. <laughs> and I'm like... I'm like, sure. What what's going on? He goes, well, you you it was the same foot doctor that my dad had. He goes, you like that one? You should you'll love this one. And I was Check asking, this out. I'm like, why are you? You know, when I had I had a planter's right removed when I was younger, and it was they used a, a knife and a scooper, like a, a scalpel, and it was in between my toes. Hers was on the on the base of her foot, and I'm like, well, can I ask a question? He's like, sure, go ahead. I said, well, I had mine removed. They cut it out. He goes, oh, we've gotten better since then. He goes, we have a nice little laser that we use. And he goes, you have to. And he goes, you have to get all of it for it not to come back. And I was right. like, oh, okay. So it's a little black dot. When you get underneath it, it gets bigger. Yeah. So I was oh, yeah. like, I was just over the shoulder, like, okay. I had one of those on my feet, and when I was a, a teenager, well, young man, teenager, and I, I dug it out using various knives and utensils over the course of like ten years. It took me to get that fucker completely gone. Every once in a while, I'd be like, "All right, it's time to go with this fucking war. It's hurting again." And that's the reason why she, yeah, that's the reason why we had hers, hers removed and mine removed, because it would eventually you'd, you'd catch it just right, and you would, it would hurt for days. So, yep. Uh uh-uh. uh I know what I'm geeked about. Not having needles in your eye. I don't have any of that shit going on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it is your turn, Kev. I don't know. I, I I did have something about my eye, but now it's so fucking anticlimactic <laughs> because now I just I, I don't even have a fucking story to tell. <laughs> so fuck it. I I'm fine. I'm I'm healthy. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm geeked about that. Thank you all for being more fucked up than I am. <laughs> your turn, Paul. <laughs> That's um, a pretty low bar. Uh, tomorrow yeah. he'll have we'll get him he'll hurt himself or something like yep I'm not geeked about that anymore <laughs> uh as you said i'm excited because wrestlemania is finally here that's not uh, here yet it, it will be when this drops i'm planning on timing it just about correctly uh so this should like- drop in time for people to uh listen to the show and then go watch the uh hall of fame ceremony so that's my plan that, anyway. That, that's that's <laughs> Friday, that's night. Friday night, right? Yes, after SmackDown, apparently. I don't know how right. I'm going to yep. get SmackDown in that watch before I have to be at your house Saturday, but 
Right. Yeah, I've got to work all that out myself because that's 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 a lot. So. What do you have on Saturday? Yeah. You're afraid it doesn't matter. They don't. I know. Um. But yeah, I'm super excited about this. Um, as Hugh just alluded to, we are we are having a a gathering at my place for it. Both nights at WrestleMania. Uh, I'm planning to have a good time with that. I'm looking forward to it. I hope the rest of you guys are. Um, no. Should be fun. Uh, who are you, shit? You've been texting me all week about it already. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. Food, so when he brings his girlfriend, he can hide it from her. <laughs> right. I just want to know if we're having snacks. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed yeah. to bring them. That we that was the text message. Yeah, Is that I, going? No, she's not going. Actually, Paul, Paul, was that one of those text messages that I wasn't in? Because the last thing I heard from you was, hey, what do you all want for food? And that was yeah. it. I've, I've gotten nothing since then. Right. No, that no. Was... He he texted me directly okay. last okay. night. Yeah. Because I know sometimes you, no, you guys know. end up shuffled off to a message I, I'm not part of or because AT&T, you know, right. the, the whole picture message thing, I don't get. Yeah. No, this isn't one of those things. He directly came to me and was like, what, no. what's the food plan? Do you want me to bring something? I and, yeah, no, that... I'm like feeling left out now. Dude, we texted like all night Monday. Oh. <laughs> like the entire raw. So just to be clear, it is bring your own food. Uh, you can. You especially because you've got the special dietary restrictions you're doing. Okay. That's the only thing. We're, we're still trying to work out whatever else is going to be there. Uh, the pizza? only... Huh? Pizza? Pizza didn't work out so good for me the last time. What happened? Didn't get it up. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't order enough pizza. There was one slice of pizza left. I went out to grab it. I come in with the last slice, and Madison's watching me, and she goes, is there any more pizza left? And I just went. Mm. So, I got none of the pizza. <laughs> I think the time before that, when we were all there, you got too much pizza. Oh, for game night, yes. Then there was then there was like 37 pizzas. <laughs> and just like, okay, well, guess that happened. <laughs> Sorry. but yes that's what's got me excited and that's why i'm forcing you guys tonight to basically have a wrestlemania edition of geek pod so any of you that don't like wrestling you might as well tune out now i mean because you've already downloaded it so we're gonna get the, the check for you checking it out anyway so but let's roll right into it with the Players Club, and thanks to Corbs with us uh, doing the Brain Trust Monday night, uh, he decided that we should do the Players Club a little bit different this week. He wants me to pose a question. What is your favorite pro wrestling themed video game? Of all time. Mm. See, and Kevin, this... that's not something you can probably answer, so you can go with what you normally want to talk about when we get to you anyway. Somebody else go, because I have to look it up. Yeah, okay. I can go. I can go first if it's easier. Okay, I'm pretty sure you're going to say something about the Attitude Era. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite N64 game of all time, WWF No Mercy for the N64. That was a great one for sure. Uh, one of the best storylines, Royal Rumble. Um, you can create your wrestler, and I'll never forget. I had the Jason Hos hockey mask, and I created a wrestler named Drill Monsoon. With a J R I L L, so drill monster. Drill, not drill. Okay. Yeah. It was like okay. It's cool, but it was like one of those days where you would create your fighter on the N sixty four. Three hours go by, you're only a quarter way done with that wrestler. Yes. You're not even, you're not even done. It's when it rivaled like SmackDown for the PS one a little bit, but I was always Nintendo, so the N sixty four No Mercy was great because they had all the different storylines. You could have a, a manager. You could have your three rivals that you would go with. And you would have SmackDown Mall, which was really neat, too, as well. So that I like that. Um, but it was cool, though, because um, I like uh, that a lot because, like, Chris Benoit and I always had this tag team, which was really cool. I know you can't say his name much anymore. I know. Ugh, probably censor that out. But um, <laughs> Chris Benoit, Ken Shamrock, and I were, like, a stable, and it was really cool. Uh, but N64, um, WWF No Mercy, highly recommend. And I'm not going to lie, I probably played it a little last week as well. Nice. Who wants to be next? Corp's will, a good uh, topic, by the way. <laughs> so I, I had to look it up just because there was a, a whole bunch of um, 
wrestling games that came out with the, with the advent of the PlayStation. And uh, again, I had wasn't sure which one it was was my favorite. Now, I know everyone says N64's No Mercy was the best one. Um, I never liked that game. I the controls were weird. I had trouble with it. I loved 2004's um, WWE SmackDown versus Raw, and that was the one that had Breaking Benjamin on the soundtrack. They they were using real bands for the soundtrack. They had a uh, Firefly and a polyamorous friend on there, I believe. Oh, yes. It was my first introduction to Breaking Benjamin. And uh, I mean, I think Power Man 5000 was on there, Worlds Collide, first time I'd heard them, a, a bunch of songs that I still love to this day. Um, but it was just, it, it was a great game. I spent, I was, uh, you know, a young man. I had lots of free time. Uh, this, I believe this was before, I, yeah, this is, that was 2004 now. So I, I think I was married at the time. I was not married shortly after there, so I probably had even more time to play it. <laughs> um, but I just had a fucking blast with that game. I played the shit out of it. Nice. I couldn't tell you any other details. I don't remember why I liked it. Maybe it was the music. I do think that I figured out a way to cheese the game where I just basically Irished with the guy on the outside until uh, the ref's count was almost done and then rolled back into the ring. So if I couldn't actually beat someone, I'd just fuck him like that. <laughs> I mean that was basically early '80s WWF anyway. Like that's what was happening a lot there. So yeah. you just jumped ahead a couple decades. Corbs, two thousand four. Uh, for for me, it was the uh, the WCW NWO games from the Nintendo sixty four. Just the whole myriad of games, the WWE versus you know WCW versus NWO versus. The world or whatever revenge. It was, revenge and all those they were just i, I just like the, the we used to, we used to play it when i worked at blockbuster we'd actually because we'd rent n64s so when at night when it was real slow or whatever we'd like we'd hook it up it in up. the back oh. and we'd go back during our breaks and just play these games so it was it was pretty fun i think i i think one day i think i rented the n64 from blockbuster when i worked there because i got it for like i could rent it for like 10 bucks or some shit like that. I think I rented it for like two weeks and had the game at home for two weeks and just kept re, re up with the game. Nice. So that for me, it was pretty fun. I mean, there were some other games, but that was the, the one that I enjoyed playing. So, yeah, if you want to go or you want me to finish this off and then you can talk about your game, I can go. Okay. <laughs> I've never played a wrestling game in my life. Perfect. <laughs> he played real life. <laughs> he played real life no, I I couldn't stand wrestling uh, in high school or middle school, um, so I pretty much hated it. All right, perfect. All right, so mine was also from the Nintendo sixty four era, and that was WrestleMania two thousand. Mm -hmm. That was just I remember that was the one that got really really deep with the character creation and stuff like that. Like Jack was saying, you could spend hours, and I did, tweaking every little thing. And I, I not only had my one character, but I had an entire stable of military, like paramilitary themed guys that were. It was a whole thing, and we were we were running the table with them, and it just I so many countless hours. The same thing. I was um my twenties and single, and we had nothing better to do than get fucked up and played WrestleMania 2000 at my house all the time. So Wasn't we that the one where they used the clips of the real music, like digitized, yeah. but it was looped in really short segments. It was really yes. weird. Like Stone Cold's was just like the first four beats over and over again. Da -da 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 -da. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And oh, at the man. time, it was like the epitome of like wrestling games. Like you look at them now and they look like characters from Minecraft. But we were like, oh my god, they look just like them. Yeah. Their like faces are like pushed in and all that stuff. <laughs> they were basically boxes. It's just there's you know. does Mortal Kombat count? Is that kind of like wrestling? Well, I mean, if they were allowed to kill each other, sure. Right. Oh okay, never mind. Over the top damn it. Like but, but you got uh you got a couple of minutes left. Uh Kev, do you want to discuss the game that you put in the notes? No. Okay. All right. It doesn't I, fit the topic. It doesn't, but that's okay. Everything's not going to fit the topic, I'm assuming. But we're yes, it will. we're trying. Yes, it will. Okay. Um, well then I, I think it's time that we move on to 
Kev's Tabletop Review. All right, so I am on theme with the game for this week. The game I found is not one that I've played, unfortunately, because I'd actually like to play this game. Um, it's called Luchador Mexican Wrestling Dice. Yes. Wait a minute. Two, yep. There's an exclamation point. Back up and do it right. Luchador <laughs> Mexican Wrestling Dice. There's not <laughs> a comment you. in there, but I just think that it should it should be a, a comment in there. I, I think so. It's just what I think. Came out in 2013. Uh, depending upon which video, which video review you watch, this is either the simplest and easiest game ever made and ever played, and it only has one kind of theme, and you just play it over and over again, and maybe mm. it's fun, maybe it's not for you, but it's fun enough to keep on playing over and over again. Or it has some intricacies that allow the game to be played differently every single time you play it. It all depends on what you get out of it. I'll read you a little bit about the game. Uh, from BoardGameGeek.com. Luchador! Mexican Wrestling Dice is a two-player game. Well, it actually could be four players if you played tag team. Anyway, uh, with uh, optional rule sets for four-player tag team play. Haha, I just kind of got ahead of myself a little bit there. Um, based on the popular world of professional Mexican wrestling or Lucha Libre, which I was just informed over our little break that you don't know we had, um, is uh, when uh, small Mexican guys jump up in the air and kickbox each other or something like that. I don't know. What <laughs> he, he, he Players start it. with 21 points of health. Okay, you have a little card, and you can follow along on your on your little hit points with a little, little, uh, a little game piece. Um, or 18 in a tag, tag team match, and roll custom dice. So each, each side has four die, a blue side and a red side. Um, you have a little game board you play on, and the very first thing you do is you roll, both players roll their dice at the exact same time. If dice hit each other, and the idea is you do roll exact same time because they kind of hit each other and they can fly off the board. If they fly off the board, they're out of play. Um, they, uh, try to either reduce it. Okay. It's like you imagine custom dice. Try to reduce the opponent's strength points to zero to win by a knockout. I don't think I have to tell you guys that. Or hold the opponent down on the mat for a count of three to win uh, by a pin. So basically, there's different moves on the dice. There's different, um, you know, it's a it's a it's a pin, it's a hit, it's a pin, it's a it's a block. There's different things you can roll on the dice. Now there isn't a lot of strategy, and that's one of the things people said was a negative about the game. But the the chance of the game mean that. You can possibly win even though you don't really roll the best dice that you'd think you'd want to roll for for a for a, a hand. Um, the, the gameplay is back and forth. There's other die that um, that you roll for different moves and different functions, and maybe you know maybe you're pinned. Well, then you have an opportunity. You have a three count to roll dice once, twice, three, or three, you know, three, two, one. You have the dice to roll to possibly get out and turn on the other player. Um, I saw a game set that actually disassembles or or assembles from the box to make like a little ring. Ooh. So you have a little, uh, it, it has sides and it has, you know, strings that go around it. So you actually roll your dice inside the ring. Um, it looks very, very interesting. It looks like it's a lot of fun. Uh, 2013, it came out. Um, two to six players, it actually says. So there's must be some some component that allows you to play up to six players. Uh, best is two or four. Again, this is all according to BoardGameGeek.com. 15 minute play time. I every review I've seen says it's longer than 15 minutes. Ages even after you get used to the game. Uh, ages eight and up. Um, and here's the best part. Wait, 1.24 out of five. So. Pull it out of the box, up and running in no time, and you're going to have multiple games in an evening. And uh, by all by all accounts, it's, it's an awful lot of fun. Really, the only components of the game are the dice 
you do have player cards that do have some strengths and weaknesses on the cards, which you can kind of play against each other. But the reality is the dice determine what happens. So even though you may have a, you know, a, a, you know, this flying kick move or something like that, it doesn't make any difference because it's the same exact thing as whatever the other guy has that can, he can block. Okay. So, so really the dice determine what, what happens. And, and, um, uh, it's an interesting looking game. It's a colorful game. The board pieces are, 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 um, uh, well-made. Uh, the character cards are well-made. I encourage you to take a look at it on boardgamegeek.com. Uh, it's again, it's Luca, Luca, Luchador. I keep wanting to say Luchador, but it's Luchador <laughs> with an exclamation point. Uh, Mexican wrestling dice. And let's see what, uh, oh, the other thing. Uh, pricing I've seen from $5 up to about $19, all depending on whether or not you get it on boardgamegeek.com's Geek Bart or in Noble, Noble Night Games or eBay. Um, you can probably also find it locally. My guess is that this game has been out a while, so we could probably find it at uh, Play the Game, Read the Story. Outstanding. Um, yeah. Uh, that's, so that's my pick for the week. Um, I think it. I think it kind of fits. I like it. Definitely like it. Very cool. All right. If we don't have anything else to throw uh, into the ring here, uh, let's. Uh, uh... <laughs> yeah. Go into a commercial, and uh, we'll come back with the news. Stick with us, guys. Hi, this is Craig Palmer. If you ever aspire to be a wrestler, come on down to Upstate Wrestling Entertainment, located at 1121 Glenwood Avenue in New York. We're open every Tuesday and Thursday from 6.30 p.m. until 9 p.m. Come on down and join us. See you then. <laughs> Looking for the hottest new comic on the shelf or a key back issue to complete your run? How about that rare statue or action figure that you've scoured the internet looking for? Come to Collectibles Galore, located in North Syracuse with ample off-street parking. Collectibles Galore has a huge selection of comics, toys, and rare pop culture items you won't find anywhere else. Comics Galore is always buying comics and toys and will give you the fairest price for your collection. New customers get 15% off their first purchase in store. Collectibles Galore for all of your pop culture needs. Stop in and see for yourself why Collectibles Galore is the king of comics. Now, before you count your blessings that your cat didn't lick herself an expensive new second asshole for the second week in a row, here's the news. First up, let's just wait for the shaders to compile. We can all be frustrated and lose our minds together. The Last of Us Part 1 is now on PC, but it has not been worth the wait. Apparently, it is a complete mess. From reports of it taking hours to compile shaders to constant crashes and graphic issues, it seems the game is running at potato forehead, or potato quality, sorry. Um, the game is sitting with an overwhelmingly negative review at the moment and no response from Sony yet on what be, might be done to fix the problem. The developer Naughty Dog has said they are working on it. There are even reports of the game somehow eating resources after the game has been closed, which is not something I have ever heard of. When the HBO Max version of your game stutters less on launch day than the actual game, you have a problem. That clicking you hear is your hard drive. <laughs> Next up, the truth is still out there. Maybe we can find it this time. X-Files creator Chris Carter revealed this week that Black Panther and Creed director Ryan Coogler is reportedly developing a new version of Fox's iconic sci-fi franchise, The X-Files. Of course, he failed to offer details as to if this is a revival or a full-on re reboot. Carter just said, I spoke to a young man, Ryan Coogler, who is going to remount the X-Files with a diverse cast, so he's got his work cut out for him because we covered so much territory. 
I wouldn't say they covered that much territory. The last time Chris mounted the X-Files, he fucked it right into cancellation. Uh, they teased that they would cover a lot of territory and then stopped just short of revealing or saying anything. While I absolutely love the show, can anyone honestly say they 100% understand what the fuck actually happened? The X-Files was all foreplay, no consummation. Even the final episode of The Revival was like, we forgot to explain everything, but Scully's pregnant. Hooray! I sincerely hope they have a better direction and complete story arc this time around. Having Duchovny and Anderson not finding proof at a diverse senior citizen, the senior center for 20 episodes a season would not be good television. Wow, that was hard to get through. Having Duchovny and Anderson not finding proof at a diverse senior center for... I can't even do it now. <laughs> wow i should not write shit like that and finally no way dude while not new information per se it resurfaced this week that full house star john stamos better known as well no not really just known as uncle jesse that's all he's done tried to get the olsen twins fired during the early days of the show his reason they cried a lot and made it very challenging to get the shots filmed well no wonder they cried a lot Hungry babies cry. They've both clearly been really hungry for like 36 years. I bet they still cry a lot. I would I would if I was that hungry. And that's the news, kids. Now, I leave you with another interesting Averyism. We're driving to the store, and we hear from the back of the car, Bill Nye, the Russian spy. Bill Nye, your mom's a guy. Bill Nye loves pecan pie. This is why we go to therapy. Although I, I'm not sure it's not doing more harm than good. To get to her therapist's office, you have to walk down a long hall with new tribal plain, paintings and giant stylized paper mache vaginas on the wall. I mean, for real, who says we need 11 giant paper mache sheet metal and broken glass vaginas for atmosphere? This is a healing place. That person needs to be writing horror movies, not decorating office buildings. Paul? In other news, Andre the Giant once fell asleep in the middle of a match. With Big John Stud. Back to you, Corbs. Oh. I didn't fall asleep during a match. But like he probably put his hand on his face. He's like, yeah. <laughs> It was probably after drinking 73 beers. Yeah, I was say the the man was a legendary drinker. Not a bottle of wine, case of wine. Cases and, of wine. Yeah, cases yeah, of wine yeah. and cases of beer. I mean, well, yeah, I, I am not exa normally no, I exaggerate yeah. numbers. I am not exaggerating that number. Yeah, no, I might he, be off a little bit. I don't remember the exact one, but I know it was seventy-two or seventy-three yeah. beers in one night. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we'll talk about uh, the mania for for sports this week. I mean, for me, baseball starts. Yesterday, you know, it started for everyone else too. <laughs> well, for Corb per se, though, that's very true. Good point. You know. Um, started yesterday when this comes out. Um, so you know, everybody's got a shot this year. Let's let's hope for the underdogs, not the Yankees. <laughs> I knew Paul was like that. <laughs> so, um, but other than that, I mean, yeah, it's it's. NC2A time, I guess, championships this weekend, Saturday and, and Monday. Um, I don't give a fuck who wins. I really don't. I mean, UConn's been blowing teams out. I, I turned on the, that game over the weekend, and then versus Gonzaga, it's supposed to be the best game of the um, of the weekend, and turned it on, and they were up 30 points over Gonzaga. And I was like, oh, well, that's that's good. Let's go to something else. So And uh, next, yeah. Yeah, right? Let's go next. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we'll, we'll we'll go we'll go mania this week. Um, for for a topic, I guess I'll keep with the wrestling theme here. Um, I, I'm looking forward to WrestleMania. I mean, I've I've watched most of them all the way back from you know WrestleMania one, in some form or another. Um, either running it on pay per view when you did that shit, but it was like 20 bucks. Now it's like your firstborn kid. Yeah. Or you got to have Peacock or whatever. Or a friend who has Peacock. That's <laughs> true. <Sure. laughs> or a oh. VPN. For the record, <laughs> I have Peacock. 
So um, right, it heals then. <laughs> yeah, so it, it it's going to be interesting. Uh, I've been looking, trying to see like what matches are are on what day. I don't know if they've finalized a lot of them. I know um, Seth and, and Logan Paul will be Saturday night. Um, I know Cena. I guess Cena and Theory are also Saturday night. Aren't they opening the show? I think they're that's opening, what I heard. They're too. opening the show. Yeah. yeah, I think that was when I was listening to um, Raw on Monday. I think that's what they said that they were going to be opening the show. Um, got the uh, the six women tag match. I think that's on Saturday. Um, I don't know who else is on Saturday, but I know Roman and Cody will be Sunday night. They're the, they're the main. I event. don't think they've announced everything yet because I don't think they have yet either. I've, I've been looking on like uh, on sites to see uh, they've got like four matches for. Three or four matches for Saturday, I think one or two for Sunday, and they've got like six. They haven't decided where they're going to go. There's a rumor right now: Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte will be Saturday night night's main event, and then Roman versus. Jeez, um, I can't talk Cody. right now. Uh, Cody will be Sunday night, so that's the rumor right now. Which makes sense because I mean, she won the Rumble; she should get a main event slot. Yeah, and, right. and, and Cody got Cody won the, the men's rumble. He gets he gets the one with Roman. Mm-hmm. So, um, looking forward to seeing the Usos versus Sammy and and Kevin KO. Owens. Yeah, KO. That should be that should be a good Jericho's match. best friend. <laughs> right. So that that should be a good match. I mean, I think it's all going to be good. You know, I'm looking forward to to watching. Even if, even if I only make it one night, because I'm going to be uh, house sitting this mm-hmm. weekend. So um, I'm going to try to make both nights, even if it's just me on, I think my son might come Saturday. So nice. So, but I'm not 100% sure. We're going to, like I said, we're going to be house sitting. Um, I am taking him to see Dungeons and Dragons this weekend. So <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he really wants to see that. Actually, he wants to, he wants to see that and he wants to see the Mario movie. So actually I am going to take him to see that before I go away. Awesome. So I took a half a day. On Wednesday, I got out at eleven thirty, and the movie starts at one twenty. I had to fight with the guys that I'm going going away with to get a little later. <laughs> they want to leave. So when we first started making this plans to leave, we were leaving at like six o'clock at night, and we were going to drive through the night and get down there about seven o'clock in the morning or whatever. Grab some breakfast, play some golf or whatever, and then it was, well, let's leave at noon, and I'm like. Okay, well, we were talking about leaving at six. Now we're leaving at noon. What the what what the fuck just happened here? I'm like, I gotta work all day. They're like, well, well can't you call, can't you take a, take 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 the day off? I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> I'm already taking two days off to go to the tournament. The goal was to leave after we got out of work. So then it was we're leaving at noon. Then we're leaving at five. Then we're leaving at four. Now we're leaving at three thirty. So. So, but yeah. So I don't know what you guys think about WrestleMania. I don't think what you guys think about the matches. I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about it in future segments. So that's about uh, all I've got sports related. All right. It's been a slow week for me. The only other thing I got to add about what we were talking about is when was the last time that they could say that John Cena was a curtain jerker? Like that's. Yeah. I'm a little surprised. I'm not because they say you either want to be the first match on or the last match on. So true. And most if, if people are gonna rent it and watch it, they're gonna sit there and watch the first match. I agree with you. Oh, yeah. They're gonna be there for the last match. My and I, about this, and I don't still don't know I still don't know the answer to it. Do you think that Cena loses the theory? That's yes. the question. Aren't we gonna talk about that later? Yeah. We can, yeah. Yeah, we have something else coming up with that. So, so yeah, we will carry yeah. that over afterwards. I think I think somebody who has crossover appeal like him, it makes it sense to put him on early because you might get some casual viewers who are yeah. just like, "Oh, John Cena is going to wrestle again." They're not going to stay up till eleven thirty at night to see that. True. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't. It's, it's. I think the culture has changed with it too. It's not. It's not like it used to be where the curtain jerkers were literally nobody's like they were there it was a filler slot like, again because usually it was for live shows and people were 
filling the filling the arena still. So you put on somebody that nobody cares about at the beginning. Well, that culture's changed. I, everybody that's on any of the televised shows on WWE AEW now is somebody that somebody wants to see. Yep. Yeah, you know, it, and this is WrestleMania. They're not yeah. going to put on some bullshit match to start it off. The pre-show or something like that, maybe, or maybe right. they'll do just do a longer pre-show nobody cares about and call it Stand and Deliver. I don't know. Yeah, there's that. I just miss, miss the days they would bring back like Sunday Night Heat or something like that right before a, a pay per view. Yeah, but they don't do that. I anymore. used to love that. <laughs> right? Because you would get like one or two really good matches before the pay per view on Sunday Night mm-hmm. Heat. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And that was the only time Sunday Night Heat mattered. Any other night, it didn't. It was just bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the main event was always, like, Test versus, like, Albert Giovanni Pizza Brown. Man or whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's Albert or whoever. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, let's move it along for Jack and his erroneous questions of the week. Hit it. All right. So, Kev, I know this isn't your topic, but we're doing some WrestleMania trivia questions. So, good luck. He is so thrilled to be here tonight. <laughs> With, so, you get you get the handicap this week. So, you get to pick somebody as your partner. So, pick some yeah, he's so pick one of these guys as your partner. So, pick one You get one to be a four. tag team. You get to be a tag team with somebody. So, pick a number 1 through 4. 4. He also didn't pick his partner yet. <laughs> Who's your partner? Corbs. Okay. Here we go. Ready, Corbs? Yeah. And ready, Kev? <laughs> <laughs> Which WWE women's superstar at WrestleMania defeated Lita and Trish Stratus? I know this one. I don't you can know guess one. two ga- you have two guesses, so because you're a tag team. I would guess, wait a minute, was it one person that defeated two people? Yes. What the hell's her name? Um, The one I'm always telling you about, Paul. This is a hard one, I'm not going to lie. So I'm, I'm not your tag team partner, I can't help no, you. No, I know, but I'm always telling you. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Maybe All I right, can... your hint, this is a, might, might help Corbs a little bit. Think of music. So think of a music genre. That's not helpful. I know um, Hugh and Paul. Do you have any ideas? Nod your head or thank you. Shake your head. Yeah. I this one I, I had do the answer, and I, now I don't. I'm not so sure anymore. They wanted I her to be. I have an answer too, and I'm, not, I'm like, mm, was that the one I was thinking of? Yeah. They wanted, lie, one name. Name. they wanted this one to be a big name. They wanted her to be a big name, but she really wasn't. Oh. She was the champion going in, and she was the champion leaving too. Believe it or not. Well, champion as soon as I figure out music, listen, I've got somebody in mind. I just got to remember what her name is. Are you talking about Sasha Banks? Nope. Okay. No, oh, way before Sa- Sasha Banks. Yeah, I know, but he talks about Sasha Banks and Jade Cargill. So oh, Jade okay. Cargill. No, one All more right. guess now. <laughs> now it's on Corbs. <laughs> Corbs, you're up. Don't Google. I was about to say, what are you doing down there? Well, I was looking up Instagram trying to find her, but I no. No, this no, one's I, a hard one. This is I a really say, tough one. I want to say Molly Holly, but you want to go with that or no? Yeah, I'll go with that. No. So, like I said, think of musical groups. She was a champion going in, leaving. She had a short live with the WWF, WrestleMania 18, Jazz. Oh. oh. Yeah. That was a hard one. That was Wasn't really that Booker one. T's wife? No. No, that was Charmel. Sorry. I don't know. Q, go ahead. What are you trying to say? They looked alike, Paul? Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> Tell me you didn't just say that. <laughs> It doesn't matter what they look like. (laughs) Q, one through three. Uh, Two. Okay. This male WWE superstar 
is the only superstar to cash in his money in the bank and win at WrestleMania. See, I knew this was going to be difficult. I can't even think it now. I can't think of who's won. I got nothing. I, if I give you something, I'm guessing. Please. Yes. Edge. No. Better not be the Seth, Seth Rollins. I was going to uh, say that, but I was busy coughing. Yep. 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 Seth Rollins. Because he cashed it on Roman. Yes, he did. Yeah. I thought it was Seth Rollins. You did. I know you did. That's your guy. Of course. On your head feet. One. Okay. So, all right. Can I help Corbs? Sure, why not? Okay. Okay. Can, but Corbs gets to guess first, though. Oh, because you guys are. He doesn't want you to so. blow it. <laughs> <laughs> but or yeah. Corbs can say, "Okay, Kev, you guess." So this is actually a cool one. Which WWE superstar said the following quote? Woodstock is to rock and roll when WrestleMania is to wrestling. Okay, hint if you want. Think politician. Donald Trump. No. And then you said Donald Trump. Now it goes to Kev. So politician, Minnesota. Oh, okay. now I, I, know. Now. I know. Now you know. Now you know. <laughs> yeah. The judge. I don't know what the Jesse the body. Jesse the body Ventura. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's okay. like, yeah, whatever. He's like, I got nothing. Because you I can't actually... imagine Kane saying that. And he's the only other politician I can think of. Who yeah, didn't he say no more trans people? Body Ventura is. <laughs> you don't know who Justin the Body Ventura is? I do. Was? I actually know oh, who just... he is. He's been Probably from Predator. Yeah. 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 Paul, I, I think you're going to get this one. So you ready? Yeah. Which WWE superstar, male or female, I'm not going to release the gender has headlined WrestleMania the most times. So it's a two-part question. Who is it and how many times? Sure. So they've been the main eventer eight times, male or female, and how many times? Um, the Undertaker and 13 times. No. Not does anybody because Taker no, Taker points. was didn't really main event WrestleMania. You're right. I thought it was That's Undertaker too at first, but it's not. So somebody interfere if they want. This is open. I, I can't, it's say, gotta, go ahead. I want to say The Rock, and I want to say like ten times. And I would say John Cena, and five times. Oh no, I was. See, no, it's not that no. either. Neither. Kev, do you want to take a guess? Uh, no. Kev no. thinks it's Hulk Hogan, and it was eight times. That's actually correct. <laughs> he headlined eight of the first nine WrestleManias eight times. <laughs> That's you just pulled that out of your ass, didn't you? <laughs> well, I, I mean, after everything was said and done, I was like, dumbass, it's Hogan. <laughs> uh, you can't see that, but yeah, it's no. Hogan. And then the number <laughs> I did pull right out of my ass. You Way to go, Kev. Your, Look at you. You should have seen your face. You're like, oh, holy shit. <laughs> wow. All right, <sighs> but we're going to cut it to a, a segment real quick. At the end of these trivia questions, I was talking to Paul about this, and I want to try this. So uh, being the history guy, I want to try something. So did you know today marks 50 years on March 29th, 1973, the United States seized and pulled their troops out of Vietnam? So March 29th, 1973 is when the troops were pulled out of Vietnam. So I want to thank our troops for then that served then, now, and in the future. So thank you to our military right there. So on March 29th, 1973, we pulled our troops out of Vietnam. So thank you to our Vietnam vets and veterans for then, now, and forever. So wow. you missed the chance to say then, now, and together. together, forever. No, yep. forever, then together. Oh, forget together. Yep. I actually wasn't trying for a wrestling thing right there, but we can do it right there. But it still worked out. And then to even add and give it me. the old John Cena. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> Just because I don't have room to do the running back and forth on the stage thing. <laughs> and could you rap for breath. us? I don't know. Right. I don't see, I don't see could you running rap back and for forth us? at all anyways. Back to you, Paul. All right. <laughs> well, then I guess it's weekly topic time. And now for this week's edition of the Bureau of Truth. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not doing that to you guys again. <laughs> um, again, I'd like to thank Corbs for this suggestion. <clears throat> Vince taps you. You get your own WrestleMania moment. Who's your opponent? You can pick it from any time. All right. When we come back from the break, I expect some good answers, especially from Kevin. I have one. I think I know who he wants to roll around with already. <laughs> Stick with us, guys. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Craig Palmer. If you ever aspire to be a wrestler, come on down to Upstate Wrestling Entertainment, located at 1121 Glenwood Avenue in New York. We're open every Tuesday and Thursday from 6.30 p.m. till 9 p.m. Come on down and join us. See you then. <laughs> Looking for the hottest new comic on the shelf or a key back issue to complete your run? How about that rare statue or action figure that you've scoured the internet looking for? Come to Collectibles Galore, located in North Syracuse with ample off-street parking. Collectibles Galore has a huge selection of comics, toys, and rare pop culture items you won't find anywhere else. Comics Galore is always buying comics and toys and will give you the fairest price for your collection. New customers get 15% off their first purchase in store. Collectibles Galore for all of your pop culture needs. Stop in and see for yourself why Collectibles Galore is the king of comics. means it's time for the weekly topic let me reiterate Vinny mac or triple h or whoever it depends on you know what your predilection is for you know people abusing their power to get laid um <clears throat> comes to you and says you're getting your wrestlemania moment you're getting booked on the grandest stage of them all who's your opponent hmm all right so put me on the spot here all right, so I'm going to be in WrestleMania, Self you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah, why not? All right, cool. So why just an opponent, you're saying? No. So exactly. Run with it. So exactly. So all right, so I enter the ring, mesh shorts, no shirt on, and like um, and the wrestling boots. I am so scrawny. This is not good. And Gilbert. then I was like, but I was, yeah, I'm like Gilbert, basically. So I'm like, all right. So I walk down to the ring. Then I have The Contender. It was one of my favorite TV shows with my dad. That's my theme song. So I don't know if you guys know it. I think Corbs might know. So it's kind of like a Rocky type feel. It's like a good type song. So I'm entering the ring. I start running my mouth, which I'm like, I can take on anybody who I want to. So who comes down? Spike Dudley. So that's who we'll be, I'll be fighting. And then we'll be fighting one another. And then, nope, not just Spike Dudley. Let's, let's go into, let's see, this person never died. Triple threat match. Here comes Crash Holly. How did so, I know that's what you're going to say? And then uh, we're all fighting. But the last person to enter the ring is Taka. I'm probably going to butcher his last Michinoshu. name. Yeah, Taka Michinoku. But now Howard Finkel comes into the ring. This is for the light heavyweight championship of the world. So it's a fatal four way with Taka being the champion. We're all fighting each other. And then I just like pretend i'm hurt outside the ring i'm like oh i'm hurt 
and Jim Ross and Jerry the King Law, they're announcing the match. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just going to watch this match with you guys and all that. Those guys beat each other up. And then right at the end of the match, I just steal everybody's thunder. I pin a taco for the title. and I'm the light heavyweight champion of the world. This is great. So I just like watch the match, enjoy WrestleMania. Three great wrestlers right there. And I just steal and I become the light ch- champion of the world, which is perfect. Motherfucker just booked his whole match. Yeah. I just did. He booked it. He wrote it. It's so good. And oh, I came up with that in one minute. Pretty sure that's how they do it on WWE most of the time, too. Most of the time. Definitely on AEW. Don't they? <laughs> <laughs> AEW, it's like, oh, shit, I'm wrestling tonight? <laughs> <laughs> what do we got? <laughs> but Howard Finkel has to be the ring announcer. The come Fink. on. I, come on. He's got to come. <clears throat> I just got to bring him back. All right. Well, I am not going to go into as much detail as Jack did because I did not know the assignment called for that. Um, (laughs) Here's the thing. I I, I did give this some thought during our little break. You know, my my default answer would be, you know, my favorite wrestler, Stone Cold Steve Austin, right? What? But but (laughs) here's the problem. He doesn't. I, I love him, but he doesn't have a lot of moves. It's not gonna. He's not gonna be able to carry me in a match. Yeah, like you said, he's got like four moves. It would be awesome, but it would be a horrible match. And I thought, who do I like that would put on a really good match and be able to carry me? And I like Chris Jericho. I'm really into Chris Jericho. But then I realized the perfect WrestleMania moment for for me would be me versus Paul Showins for the last piece of pizza. <laughs> with a run in by Madison yeah. <laughs> that might happen this weekend right <laughs> I like it that's great that was a nice swerve I love it uh, <laughs> Corbs or Kev who wants to go next I'll Madison's go next. your guest referee then. sorry go ahead Corbs I'll go next um, for me I'm not going to go into the detail that Jack went into but uh, for me, it would be one of my favorite wrestlers, and it would be a wrestler from the Attitude Era, but the Attitude Era from WCW. I would wrestle Diamond Dallas Page. I, I, there was Probably something was. about his character watching WCW that I just gravitated towards. I liked DDP. Um, I don't know what it was. It's just something about his character that I liked, and that's who I, that's who I would like to, to wrestle because I, I would kill to have it to be diamond cuttered. I can we can work that out this weekend if you want. I'm sure we could. I mean when we when the last slice of pizza comes out, it might be a fatal three way. Um in other news part two, just because this is one of them that I looked up for you, Corbs. Uh do you know that I believe it was when Honky came down, uh Honky Talk Man, who's yeah. not a friend of the show, if we remember correctly. <laughs> um fuck that guy. Uh, but when he he got driven to the ring in his pink Cadillac for WrestleMania, I believe it was a young Diamond Dallas Page that was driving that car. Oh wow! All right, Kev, I stalled long enough for you. Have you got something? Yeah, I'm just gonna say one name, and you guys can make up your own story. <laughs> Sasha Banks, as I figured. Again, I can't fault you for that either. <laughs> that would be a fatal two way because you'd have a heart attack. <laughs> yep. That's, I, I'm with him on that I'm, one too. I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm thinking: is it a is it a mud wrestling match? Is it an oil match? <laughs> Kev Whatever. Doesn't care. It's a exactly. no pants, no problem match. Whatever. Frog panties match. What what was Bischoff's thing there for a while? HLA. Oh wait, that doesn't work. Kevin's not a woman. Um, <laughs> you know, when it was the whole Kimberly thing, uh, WCW. I'm diverging from our our theme a little bit. Hot. Lesbian action. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Bitch off. Okay, and mine. I, I I thought around the same lines as Hugh did. Big surprise. Hmm. Not with us wrestling over pizza. pizza. But oh, uh, okay. mine was, I need someone who's going to make me look good in the ring. And I had to go with Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning. Because... Hey. It's yes, he's he's he was always a consummate professional. He he was one of the best bumpers in the business. And I just listened to a two and a half hour podcast about him. So he was in the forefront anyway. And then all that everyone kept saying was when you wrestled 
Kurt Hennig, it always was the best match of your career because he went out of his way to make everybody look fucking fantastic. He was he was one of those guys that you feel like you're getting hit by a, with a feather, but it looks like it's the most devastating moves ever. Like he was just pro. Look at me, pro. He was um, Mr. Perfect. Yes. Um, and just to, to give a shout out to this podcast, it's um it's one with Bruce Pritchard, and it's called Something to Wrestle with Bruce Pritchard. And the stories he tells about Mr. Perfect, because he was there for all of the, the vignettes and everything they were filming. Yeah. <laughs> you you've got to go back and listen to this because you know he, I'm sure they need more listeners. Um, but you gotta go search this out. Um so fucking funny. And I didn't know this, but Bruce Pritchard is like the king of impressions, like pro wrestling impressions, and he is just fucking hilarious. Check this show out, you'll actually laugh at that one. Um, but that's yeah, that that would be my guy. So <clears throat> and let's moving on if we're done with that one. And I think we are because everybody had really good answers for that one. Bonus points, Jack, for actually booking your entire match. I'll give you that. <laughs> Got you. And, and you know, resurrecting dead. Well, I guess I was resurrecting dead people too. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is normally where I would ask you guys what you've been watching, but unless anyone has any like pressing television stuff they want to discuss that we haven't yet, this is where I thought we could. Uh, Go over our predictions for the card at WrestleMania 39. Now I sent all you guys the the form I, I, I created earlier. Corbs? Are you gonna we're gonna go down the list and everybody's gonna you wanna do it like that, or we're just gonna you're gonna pick somebody and they're gonna like tell you whichever one they want. I thought we would just go match by match and have everybody okay. say. Good okay, idea. that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, that's what I thought you were gonna do. So I just was wondering. All right. All right. So I'll, I'll lead us on this and then everybody will give their answers. First up, I have our United States Championship match. Champion Austin Theory versus uh, John Cena. What do you guys think? Tina. Tina? You should be writing these down to see who's right. I probably should, but um, I didn't plan for that. Or I can just circulate the forms, um, you know, Saturday, and everybody can actually just check them off. Okay. All right, we'll all be at the event. You'll be giving out pieces of paper. Like, here you go, everybody. <laughs> It'll be like our bracket. Yes. Bracket I'll walk in like, here's your seat. Get it for your <laughs> pizza. You got to fill this out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, no one else is jumping to this. I will. Um, this might be the, uh, the, the, the take no one would go with, but I I'm going to go with Cena as well. Now, I know Kev said that just because that's who he knows. Um, I think <laughs> right. Cena's actually going to win this because I can see him doing a three-month run. You know, he, he's he's got lots of television and projects and stuff like that, but he wants to make sure that he's still, um, you know, part of the wrestling world. And, yeah. and, and I don't think they're not starting Peacemaker Season 2. They're moving on to that... Um, Waller. Not yet, anyway. The Waller thing. He might have some downtime, and really, he needs to show up at a handful of Raws and then the pay-per-views. I mean, even if it's only one month, but I don't see why they wouldn't do that and then have it be a rematch at SummerSlam and Theory beats him there. The, the, the reason I really think that he'd do this, A, he, I, think he probably, I think he has the time because it seems like he has a little break. I think that to elevate Theory... In this way, especially since they've talked about heart, him not having the heart in, in the promos, Theory's got to work for it. Now, Cena said to him, you know, if, if you beat me at WrestleMania, or no, if I beat you at WrestleMania, you lose. If you beat me, you still lose. And he's right, because mm -hmm. Theory needs to earn that. If they really want to build him into a uh, a decade, multi-decade star, they've got to turn a little bit around. He's able to talk. He's got the skills like crazy he needs to get the crowd behind him and you can do that even as a heel seth rollins proved that oh my god but, yes yeah but you you have you have to show them that you deserve it and this this is because the, the crowd is overwhelmingly down on him mm -hmm. 
considering how good he is, I think this is a great way for them to turn that around. And now, while we're on the subject, before we go on to the next one, how fucking great was his promo in the empty arena? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like yes. that's the first time I because because I'm I'm totally down on him. I don't like him. Like I I tune out with him. I don't care. I I'm one of the people that Cena was talking about. I just don't care. And I realize he's got the skills. He's got you know he's got something. He's someday he's going to be something. But I feel like he got pushed too fast. Oh, I I, don't I, doubt I, I feel like he got vinced is what he got. Yeah. <laughs> um. And. But then that one, like, literally, like, we're sitting there, and he goes into the promo, and I'm just like, and I stopped and took notice. And that's something that never happens with him, for me. So, I'm sorry, I had to digress there, so. It's okay. Who wants to jump in next? Corbs? Jack? All right, right. so, um, I'm actually going to go with Austin Theory Retains. Uh, because um, what you guys just said, um, the promo where it was like the pandemic era again, because like it was like so dark. And all that. Yeah, it was really cool. I was like, it was like what Paul said. I'm like, I'm really watching this, and there's no audience. Like, and like it's like what we said before. Um, it's going to be the first match of the first night at WrestleMania, so which I think is a good move. T- it's a great move. So, um, and um, as a history guy, history likes to repeat itself. So I'll go back to WrestleMania when WrestleMania when The Rock faced Hulk Hogan. It won't be to that extent, but it's just when the Hulk Hogan was with NWO and he was a heel, but the audience got behind him. You're saying Austin Theory has all these tools. This is going to be probably be one of the best matches of WrestleMania. I feel like they're going to fight so hard. They'll probably be like a 12 to 15 minute match. There'll be a lot of good moves, all that. But I just feel like the crowd will finally see John Cena because John Cena was the face of WWE for so long. And he's going to put help put Austin Theory over. Maybe this is going to be one of the first steps where the crowd's going to see this. They're like, wow, this guy can really fight. Maybe they'll turn him from a heel to a face. Maybe I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. And, or maybe he'll stay as a heel, but it, it'll show that, like, okay. Maybe, I, like, because we're all in the same boat here, I feel, with Austin Theory. It's like, he has the tools, but I'm like, I just really can't get behind him. But the way he fights Cena... I, it's gonna. I feel like he's gonna retain the title, mm. but it's gonna be so close the whole time. But it's gonna be Austin Theory winning very close, but by pinfall, Austin Theory will retain. We're gonna say heel. Cena has like one more move than Stone Cold Steve Austin. Let's You're be not real. Wrong. He's not going to be <laughs> able to to make Theory look good. Um, he can put him over, but it's there's no way from a technical standpoint this match gets carried by Cena to make theory look good. I just, I don't see that happening. The, I, I think it's the right idea because Cena's the right personality, but he's not the right wrestler. If, if you want to, if you wanted to him to have a barn burner, that was amazing. They need to put somebody else in there. So okay. uh, yeah, I, it's, yeah, I think you're right about they They want to push him. I just think that this has to be a multi-match thing for that to happen. I think he's going to have to earn that title shot back. And and you, the, basically, I think he's going to have to prove he has the heart. It, Cena already telegraphed it. He said, "Whether you win or lose at WrestleMania, you, you lose. lose." You know, he, he he's he's. I think he's already laid it out. What we're going to see is Austin Theory finding the heart to to take it back and become a fan favorite. But Corpse. Corpse. I, I I agree with you. I think Cena's going to win. I, Paul and I have talked about it a couple of times. I asked Paul if he thought that it was Cena was doing to put Theory over, but you're right. When I uh, when I watch when I watch wrestling when he's on, uh, I don't pay attention to him talking. He's got the skill on the mic. I mean, he can talk. He's got right. That's he, what happens exactly. every time I'm Cena's looking, on. Looking I mean, up um, other stuff on my phone or yep. or whatever when he's talking. Um, I think the the promo he cut with Cena in the ring was fantastic. Um, yes, Cena, that was Cena's great. always been great on the mic. He's always been. Fantastic on the mic. I think I think he was right. I think he beats him at WrestleMania, and it becomes a a summer long thing, spring summer, where it carries over a couple of different times, and at SummerSlam, that's when that's when he becomes the the he he might still be the heel, but he'll actually like he says that's when he'll find the heart. You know, he'll he'll have gone through a bunch of um, misfortunes leading up to it. 
and and whatnot. He'll lose a couple of different times, either to Cena or to somebody else. And you know he'll have to dig deep to to win that match at SummerSlam and to earn it back. You, yeah, yeah, you have to earn you, it back. You, you got to remember, it's never about the skill level of the two guys in the ring or who's better than the other. It's always about the story. And theory retaining has no story, right? Because where do you go after that? Yeah, right. he 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 his character does not gain anything from that. Right. No, because you get more of the same. Yeah, I'm the greatest. Look at me. I'm the future. I'm the now. Right, and you've got me turned around on this now, guys, because I would have said all day theory retains because what's the sense of putting the title on Cena? But if it is a limited thing and he stays until say SummerSlam, then you get the fire in the gut. He comes back. He's got to jump through hoops, and he earns his way in, which is the story. Because everyone knows, because we're we're in the age of smart marks. So everybody knows that he was Vince's guy. He got pushed. So now it's be like, you know what? No, no, he's earning. He has to earn his place. I don't think it I don't think he becomes a face off of this. But I, I, I think he's gonna earn the, the crowd's respect. And so I mean, now I I've, I've already had, I, Basically, uh, going back to the this is our bracket thing. You already blew my bracket because you already made me change my my I didn't answer. Blow anything of yours. That's not what no. she said. Uh-huh. If you're also said- going C- <laughs> you're still going Cena, but I still have to go with theory with this one because mm-hmm. like I just see John Cena being the Hollywood person, and if you're going the story, I see where you're going with it, but. I don't know if Cena will stick around right till SummerSlam or even spring. Like, but, but like you said, he doesn't. He doesn't have to. He can show right. up to, to one Raw every month or two Raws a month, and then show up at the pay per view or whatever. Or Theory's got to jump through hoops to beat certain guys to get back to Cena. Yeah, it, he was right, and he, and Paul Hewitt was right. It's the story. It's not. It's not the technically. It's not the technically sound wrestler. It's not the better guy. It's. It's all. It's a. It's a freaking soap opera. Yeah. You have to be able to tell that story. John coming, Cena coming back and wrestling one match and him losing the theory doesn't fit the bill. And he right. came back Other than and to lost put him his last match. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it, it, it work it worked two ways. Like, like Paul just said, it works two ways. He'll lose, but it will put him over because he, he'll show that he can do what he has to do. He can he can get to that point where he has the heart, he has the desire, the mental capabilities. He's going to jump through some hoops to get back to that thing, and people are going to people will get it behind him at that point, and you'll slowly see it turn over the summer. Yeah. So I think he, I think, I, and I was originally I thought that Theory would win. I thought John would put him over because that's I think that's the kind of person that John is now. He's not the face of the company. He's at anymore. that point. Yeah. Right. He's yeah. at that point where he's like the Rock. He's like he's earned it. He's yeah. done. Yeah. Right. He doesn't have to be. He doesn't. He doesn't need the title to be a good person in the company or a person no. in the company. You and like know you're what saying, John is. He, he he's like Undertaker, Rock, Stone Cold. He doesn't need to be on TV every week right. anymore. Right. He doesn't need to be he doesn't just need to be. just them saying that he was going to be at Raw in Boston. I I, I what was the number? I saw it sold an extra five thousand tickets or something. Right. Just saying. By the way, Cena is going to be there. And it's 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 easier for him to be there. That he's from he's from Massachusetts. I mean, obviously, he wants to be at that wrestling. He wants to be whenever they're in Boston. I'm assuming he's going to be there because that's where he's from. You're going to get the extra ticket from that, anyways. By him showing up, you're going to get an extra five thousand people to show up to Raw because he's going to be in his hometown or home state, I guess you would call it. But yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so, this is awesome, but we cannot spend this long on every single match. I no. was going to say the same thing. Like we're not going to, because uh, I've I've already gotten looks over there from Magnum that <laughs> you know Magnum. we can't we can't do this. No, and there's a can. lot of them that we're not. You can. Get. You guys can sit here until <laughs> three o'clock in the morning. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, out of here. I'm out of here. <laughs> uh, no, and I mean most no. of these matches we don't have that much to talk about with this. Yeah. No. So let's move it on. No, no. no. You don't want to move on. Are you Are you kidding me? No, seriously. We, we, seriously? we won't do this every match. Just give us Seriously? like thirty seconds per. Like, yeah. Just cut us off. No, yeah. no. It, it, just, it, it, some of them just give a prediction. You don't have to go into detail. Right. 
Like this one. Seth Rollins versus Logan Paul. Seth Rollins. I agree. Seth Rollins. Yep. Seth Rollins. Kev. I, I, I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> Logan Paul's Logan Paul contract ends with us. No, that? Logan no. Paul is a oh, yeah. media YouTube person. star. I want to see a YouTube star get their fucking ass handed okay. to them. Okay. okay. So. Then do you want Seth Rollins as well? Yeah, sure. so Seth Rollins. I think Seth comes out on top in this. Moving on to the uh, women's six women tag match. Trish Stratus, Lita, and Becky Lynch versus Damage Control. I'm going to go Lita, with... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lita, Becky Lynch, and Trish Stratus. I agree. That or they lose... And the next night, Becky actually does defend her title. Nice. Um, I say we all win if Bailey's wearing nice tight pants. <laughs> That's fact. Really? She has an absolute Bailey? dump truck of an ass. There's like a Facebook group dedicated to that. <laughs> oh, send me the link. <laughs> <laughs> actually, Paul, you're the admin. What am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I could be. Uh, let's keep it going because we're uh, we're on a time limit here. Uh, SmackDown Women's Championship match. Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley. Yeah, I think it's Rhea's time. I, yeah, I do too. I do too. I think it's time to pass the torch. Yep. Uh, Hell in a Cell. Edge versus Finn Balor. Edge. I'm going to go Finn Balor just because they, 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 they keep fucking him over. I think they're going to keep fucking him over. Unless they, I can't imagine, you know, it, the, Edge probably wants to retire and he wants to have something different than going against them for his last match, but I can't think of a good opponent for him. Yeah, no, so I, I don't guess... know where he goes. I think the storyline goes longer. I'm going to go with Edge on this one because it's like what I texted you guys earlier because you have Judgment Day that will come out with Finn Balor, but I'm really hoping AEW gives Christian the green light to see Gangrel and Christian with the brood or something like that at WrestleMania. That could be cool, but I don't see if it that happen. If that happens, then Edge probably will win. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Moving on. Brock Lesnar versus Omos. Can I go first? Sure. sure. My answer is, I don't care. I don't care about that one either. But... Yeah, I don't really care either. Yeah. Um, Brock Lesnar, because he wins everything. Yeah, yeah, I think Brock Lesnar goes over and he gets the F5 and it's a big spectacle. Yep. <clears throat> the Undisputed Tag Team Championship match. Usos versus uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Owens and Zayn. Yep, agreed. I don't know, guys. I, I don't know that... I don't think that they will... If they win, I think Cody loses. I, I just don't see them destroying the bloodline in one two-night event. And we know Roman's taking time off. So, man, I don't know. I'm really torn here. I think Sammy and Owens win because we are going to see the theme of the disillusion of the bloodline. Because when Roman Agreed. comes back, it's going to be main event Jay going after Roman. Okay. That's, that's my thought on it. All right. Family drama. Ray versus Dominic Mysterio. Ray. Ray. Dominic. I think it's Dominic because I don't think you see Ray come back after this. Like, I think he's retiring. Ray is going to be upset, but he's going to have to defeat his son, and it's going to hurt him. He He's old school, so he will go out on his back. Mm -hmm. Yep. And Kev, that's your Lucha Libre match. Just FYI. And huh? I, can, I can I can see Ray putting his own son over too. Yeah, I see him put him over. So I, I'll change mine up to Dominic. I see that. I do see that happening. All right. Uh, I think we're on a night two now. Uh, Raw Women's Championship match: Bianca Belair versus Asuka. Asuka. Yeah. Asuka's gonna shock people and win. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I don't see the upside. Look at her. Look at her promos. Her pro they they've been I mean, her vignettes or whatever they they've been doing a lot of video packages for her. They're trying to push her as a legitimate threat. And really, if you think about it, what are our threats? The the women's division it's it's been Charlotte, Becky, Bianca for like the past year. Sure. They so they need to position yeah. yeah they need to position somebody as a champion level uh, female wrestler. And 
I, I mean, Asuka's as good as anyone. Yeah, but we're already getting the changing in the guard with Rhea, so you you don't think that... You think Charlotte's not clean? going anywhere. This isn't a changing of the guard. Charlotte's no. just going to lose it to give Rhea her bump, to give her her time. Charlotte just came back. She's got another this 10 years too. hardcore. Yes. She's not going anywhere. She may That's come to be... Raw and be the, the challenger to Bianca on Raw, too. Yeah. So. All right, moving on, because we are running out of time. Uh, Intercontinental Championship Triple Threat. Gunther versus Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus. Gunther. 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 I agree. I think uh, it just proves how dominant Gunther is. Yeah. And he just passed the honky tonk, man, for the longest time. Good. I hate that fucker. (laughs) I know you do. That's why I brought it up. All right. The showcase matches. The women's showcase. Four uh, fatal four ways. Uh, Liv Morgan and Rachel Rodriguez. Whichever one Liv Morgan's on. You think those the ones they, they win it? I just, I just don't, I don't, I don't, don't care about the match. I Ronda agree. Rousey and Shayna Baszler, though. Rousey, would be... I would think, yeah, yeah Rousey, because she's just coming back off injury. Uh, the men's showcase: Strowman and Ricochet, Street Profits, Alpha Academy, Viking Raiders. I want to go first, if you don't mind. I think there's going to be um, the Alpha Academy is going to get into a little skirmish before, and they're not going to be able to compete. And then the winner is going to be RK Bro. They're going to enter. Mm-hmm. They're going to get them to come back. And that would be enter. cool. That's but what I, I think is going to happen. It. I see yeah. Strowman and Ricochet. Me too. That's why I figured that's the push. Yeah. Because they, they want to break up the Street Profits. Alpha Academy never does anything. No, and, they're I mean, they up haven't, too. They haven't pushed the Viking Raiders so far. Why start now? Right. Right. Yeah. And these are the, the Strowman and Ricochet, the shiny new toy. Yeah. Yep. So. Uh, and finally, the big one. Undisputed Universal Championship match. Reigns versus Cody Rhodes. Cody. Hugh, we've been discussing this match for yeah. months. Yeah. Um, I hope it's Cody. Uh, I, I think that for this to happen, it's going to happen. For it to happen anywhere other than WrestleMania is a tragedy. Th- th- this is the right stage. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah, I go with Cody, too. Yep. Rhodes takes the title. Because uh, it's kind of cool. The, yeah. Puts yeah. the death now on uh, Bloodline. It's kind of cool, though, too, because like I was talking about it with my dad tonight, and he's like, who's the main event at WrestleMania? I'm like, I told him Roman Reigns, Cody, Rhodes. He's like, is the American Dream Dusty Rhodes still going? I'm like, dad, he died a while ago. <laughs> yeah, but, dead. But, it, but it's cool, though. He's mentioning all these old names. He says the American Dream. I'm like, oh, his son's called the Nightmare. He's like, he's like honestly, if he wins, I might want to get behind that and check this out, because it's bringing a lot of the old school population. Invite your dad too. over to WrestleMania. He's so cool. Seriously, if you want to bring your dad, bring him. <laughs> I'm down. I'll ask him. <laughs> All right. All right. We got through it quick, so Kev can't be too grumpy. Uh, sure he can. We ready to wrap this up? I, I think he's probably doing updates for work or something. I don't know. Is it nugget time? I think it is. I will drop it damn nuggets. All right. And I'm keeping in the spirit of the... Uh, the show, <clears throat> in the immortal words of CM Punk, I pride myself on being a jerk because I am brutally honest all the time. Good night, everybody, and mega money, bitches. This has been a Geek Pod Network production. Titles, go! And a googly eye. <laughs> How about that laser? His girlfriend, Emily? Aglo P? Hold my cane. <laughs> Luchador. <clears throat> Burton Jerkers. Loves pecan pie. Starts for everyone. Vaginas. (laughs) All right, let's do this.